Oklahoma has 50,000 cattle producers, 10,000 wheat farms, 2,500 corn farms, 1,000 cotton farms, 500 peanut farms, and one shrimp farmer. Technically, a prawn farm. This is Pansy and Prawns in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and this is their pilot operation for raising shrimp. Prawns. Okay, technically prawns. But for the purposes of this video, we'll use shrimp and prawns interchangeably. Andy and Micah Chapman, owners of the farm, got their first batch of prawns in the fall of 2023. Our visit was almost one year later, and they've already been scaling up. Pause it. Rewind that tape and watch that shrimp jump. Tail flicking gives them a sudden burst of speed and is used for self-defense. They taught us all about the shrimp and what it takes to raise them. There are 7,000 shrimp that's here, and then here it's the 14,000 shrimp. Seven. Take it. Andy says he doesn't really farm shrimp, he farms the water. He says if the water is right, the shrimp take care of themselves. Then water sounds like a good place to start. Prawns are saltwater creatures, so they have to add salt. How much salt is in the water is called salinity. A device called a salinity refractometer is used to test the salinity level. Getting the salinity right occurs before the shrimp are put in the tank but it can be tweaked by adding salt or adding fresh water. The temperature of the water is also important. Shrimp can tolerate a temperature range of 65 to 92 degrees, but they are happiest and grow best at the target range of 82 to 86 degrees. Shrimp are cold-blooded, and if the water is too cold, their growth slows. If the water is too hot, they get stressed and unhealthy. Turbidity describes how clear or cloudy the water is. You may be wondering about the brown colored water. That is actually the optimum condition for the shrimp because it means food and other helpful bacteria are suspended in the water column. Too much turbidity, however, can clog their gills or reduce oxygen in the water. To make sure it's not too much or too little, samples get tested regularly. A sample of water is collected in this special cone and kept still. The particles settle to the bottom and can be measured so that the turbidity can be managed. That brings up two other points. Oxygen and why don't the particles settle in the tanks? We breathe air and our lungs are able to absorb the oxygen. Water contains a level of dissolved oxygen. For shrimp and other aquatic animals with gills, they filter the water over their gills, which can extract the oxygen from the water. If the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water is too low, the shrimp get stressed or suffocate. At the farm, they use an expensive meter to monitor this key parameter. Adding oxygen to water is known as aeration. Maybe you've seen aeration pumps in an aquarium. This is on a much bigger scale and not only adds oxygen, it keeps the water moving and stirred up to keep the bacteria and food from settling on the bottom. This is accomplished with this fan, which pushes air through a systems of pipes to lift stations along the perimeter of the tank. Yeah. Device called an air lift. It just maybe say that it has a septic T on it. So when air, when the stone goes in the tube, the bubbles come up and it draws water with it. And that forces the water to come out the direction you want it. Exactly. And if you put enough of these in a row, then you've got... So rather than having a water pump and, and putting electricity in... You don't want to put electricity in salt water because it's more conductive. So everything's powered by hand. So you get the benefit of movement and oxygenation. So it's a two for one. The pH is a measure of how acidic or basic something is. And alkalinity is a measure of a solution's ability to hold a stable pH. These are managed by regular testing and the addition of sodium bicarbonate, better known as baking soda. I used to buy a big bag. So what we call this in biology is sodium bicarbonate. It's baking soda. <laughs> so they told me when I first learned 
the one of the inputs um, for the system to maintain the alkalinity, which alkalinity is what offers a pH from drastic swings. So we want the alkalinity to be very high. Um, I make a ground. It's either 80 or 180. I got with the lecture. So we'll watch that. And on our on our test strips. Uh, so if there's salt, alkalinity, yeah, 180 is what our target is. It's the bottom of so if we see it starting to dip, we'll have to take the soda. That's a lot of water chemistry, but there is one more thing to cover, the nitrogen cycle. This is a natural process that keeps the water clean for the shrimp. As they eat and grow, the waste they produce releases ammonia into the water. High ammonia levels are toxic, so beneficial bacteria feed on the waste to clean it up. One type of bacteria turn it into nitrite, and another type turns it into nitrate. The chemistry can get a little complex, but to aid it along, carbon has to be added into the system. This form adds sugar as a carbon source. Um, the input is carbon. So you can use molasses, uh, wheat grain, I think, or we just use sugar cane. Uh, a guy in Iowa told me his customers said when they started using sugar cane, the shrimp were sweeter. Which, when I tell you what the sugar's for, how did the shrimp get sweeter? But sure. one of the things missing in the system is carbon for the bacteria. It's a process to break all the chains of the, its NHs and uh, NH4. I can't even read that, but the ammonia is the nitrites and the nitrates. They need carbon for waters. After the bacteria go to work, one of the byproducts is a healthy biomass that is another feed source for the shrimp. The remaining byproduct is no longer toxic and can be filtered out of the water and into collection tanks where it can later be recycled. This cycle is dependent on a healthy population of good bacteria, so a probiotic is regularly added to the water. This is probably our most intensive chemistry-related adventure so far, so a quick recap. All of these factors are important to maintaining a happy, healthy prawn habitat. The first step to managing these levels requires monitoring them, and a variety of instruments are used to measure their levels. If the levels stray from the optimum, the farm has different tools and methods to bring them back into the desired range. Now that we can keep them happy, let's talk about the actual prawns. Their life cycle begins with an egg. When they hatch, they are in the larval stage and look nothing like a shrimp. And they don't swim. They just drift. After two or three weeks and several molts and transformations, they enter the post-larval stage. They now look like shrimp and can swim, but they are only 5 to 10 millimeters long. A pencil eraser is about five millimeters. The shrimp arrive at the farm when they are about 12 days into the post-larval stage. At this stage, they'll be put on liquid feed. Over the next 30 days, the goal is to get them to one gram in weight, which is about the weight of a paperclip. Once they reach that target weight, they'll be put on solid food. The feed comes in different sized pellets, and which one is fed and how much is based on the size of the shrimp. But this is commercial feed from Ziegler Brothers in Florida. Um, they start off with different protein levels of 50% protein, 50, or 50% protein, 15% fat. This is how what size the shrimp should be, and this is what size the granules are. And it progresses. And You're eating a shrimp child? Right, basically. It gets metered in by these conveyor belts. The target goal is for them to gain two grams of weight per week, which means they're growing pretty fast. Shrimp are crustaceans, meaning they have a hard exoskeleton. To keep growing bigger, they need to shed this shell and grow a new bigger one. This process is called molting, and it affects how much they eat and requires the proper alkalinity for a strong shell. 
While the shrimp are growing, they are being checked regularly for growth and health. This is done by catching some in a net and inspecting them. The prawns grown here are king prawns, and their translucent bodies make it easy to see their digestive tract and confirm that they are eating properly. Now is a good time to point out that before the shrimp are taken to market, feed is withheld for a time period long enough that their digestive tracts are purged, meaning cleared out of any food or waste. So when do they go to the market? The most popular market size is 20 grams, but they can be kept longer and grow to bigger sizes. These fellas are from the farm's original batch, and they're 11 months old. They were held back from harvest for display and observation. At full growth, they could be 8 to 12 inches long and can be expected to live up to two years. The farm's pilot program has been very successful with lots of things learned and enough production to sell shrimp at local farmers markets. Word of mouth has helped them sell out of all their production so far as the nearby farm raised prawns offer several benefits. The product is much fresher going from farm to table in as little as hours as opposed to months. The prawns have a clean, sweet taste because of their careful water conditions they are raised in, and they have a firm texture because they are handled far less. So the quality is great, and the impact to the environment is reduced because of eliminating bycatch and avoiding the use of certain chemicals. Plans are in place to expand production and soon more people in central Oklahoma will have access to local grown, great tasting shrimp. So if you're in the area, give their Facebook page a follow and stay in the loop as progress is made. We will put a link in the video description. We hope you like this adventure. And if you wanna see more on aquaculture, check out our other videos on oysters, crawfish, and fish hatcheries. See you on our next adventure.